Okay, so we're going to start out by setting up our base framework. So this is going to take a little bit of work, but once we're done, everything else will just be pretty straightforward because we'll have everything in place that we need to get going. So we're going to be using the Slim3 frameworks. So the first thing that we need to do is install this. Now I currently have this directory up in my browser and in my text editor, I just have an empty folder. So we are truly starting from scratch here. So over in uh, GitHub, I'm just going to pull up the Slim3 page. Now we need to install Slim3 and we can do this using Composer. So if you don't already have Composer, go ahead and download that for your system. So let's open up the uh, a terminal then and let's go and paste this in. I'm currently within the cart directory that I'm working in. So we're going to paste this in and wait for this to download. So now that's downloaded, we need to think about what we're going to use to render views out. So you may have used or heard of Twig. This is basically just a template engine for PHP. And we're going to install this package called Twig View, which is part of the Slim PHP project. This will allow us to render out views very easily. So again, let's go down here and just grab this composer command and paste this in and wait for this one to download too. That one was pretty straightforward. You can see it's pulling down Twig and it's also pulling down this uh, bridge between Slim and Twig. And this is super easy to use. Now, what we're also going to do is get a little bit more advanced because that we have the potential for this project to grow a little bit larger. And also we want to keep things really nice and tidy. We're going to be using dependency injection. So if you've not worked with dependency injection before, it isn't too difficult to grasp. But what we're going to do is make this really, really easy using PHP DI. And we're going to use the slim bridge for this. So all this will really allow us to do is inject things we want to use into controller methods. We are going to be using controllers within this project. So this just goes hand in hand and just really tidies everything up and just makes everything a lot nicer to work with. So of course, we need to go and pull this in as well. So we want to go and we can just do this from the command line. So we want to do a composer require on PHP DI slim hyphen bridge. So we will run that, wait for that to download, and there we go. Okay, so the last thing that we want to pull in is our database support. So we're gonna be setting up database support as part of this part as well. Now we're gonna be using the Illuminate database component from Laravel. That might re be really strange if you've not worked with uh, Laravel before, then uh, this will be a little bit new, but really it's not too difficult to get started with. So we want to pull this into our project and we're going to do this again with Composer. So let's go ahead and just require illuminate database in. Now the benefit of actually using this is that what we'll get is a really nice way to just work with our database. We'll be able to create models and we'll be able to create relationships between things. And in our case, we know that we have a database structure here that has relationships between each other. So these tables have relationships. So this will actually really help when it comes down to working with your database. If you're a bit worried about moving away from something like MySQLi or PDO, don't worry, this will become very clear very quickly. It's not really difficult to use at all. Okay, so for our base framework, then we have installed everything we need to actually get going. So what we can do now is actually start to build up the kind of structure of our framework. So to be able to do this over in composer.json, what we want to do is PSR4 autoload all of our files. Now, all this means is, is we can autoload these in using Composer, using the PSR4 standard. And that just allows us to give a namespace to each file and then load things in appropriately. So again, we'll come back to this in a bit when we start to use it, but just go ahead and add this into your composer.json file just for now. So we have an autoload property. We have inside of here a PSR4 property. And we have in here the vendor namespace. So it's up to you whether you want to call this app or cart or whatever. It could be the name of your project or your business. But in our case, what we're doing is we are uh, namespacing this whole thing or all of our files under this cart namespace. And we're pulling all of our files from the app directory that we want to autoload. So now that we've done that, we know that we just need to create an app folder 
in there. So any files we create in there, as long as we namespace them under cart and then something else, we can just use them within any other files. Really straightforward. But again, if this is confusing, we'll see how it works later. So to have this take effect, we just need to go into our terminal and run composer, dump, auto load, and we can pass in the optimize flag. So there we go. That is our PSR4 auto loading set up. What we now need to do is just work from this public directory outwards to get everything set up. So inside of here, we're going to have a public directory. This is where your users will land. So if you're working with either Apache or Nginx, you'll need to set the root directory to this. While you're developing, it doesn't matter. You can go straight from the public directory. It's fine. But of course, when you put this into production, you'll want to make sure that that's the case. So inside of our public directory, directory then we want an ht access file because we want url rewriting on so let's add a ht access file into here and i'm just going to pull this over from my notes but of course what you're going to want to do is write all of this in there and save that out and if you are using another server like nginx then this is a slightly different setup but you can find out how to do this from the slim documentation Okay, so within public then, we just need one file. We just need an index.php file. This is the file the user will land on. It will load in everything we need, including all of our routes, and it will boot up our application. So inside of here then, we want to pull in a particular file, and that is a bootstrap file. So we can create that bootstrap file within our app directory again. So we're just gonna say bootstrap, or rather within, sorry, our root directory just going to create bootstrap in there and inside of here we are going to create a file called app.php so this file then is just responsible for booting everything up and we can require this in from our index.php file and then run our app so let's require this in first of all because we're going to do a little bit of testing along the way and in here we just want to pull in going back a directory into bootstrap and then app.php and that is it. So we can leave that as it is just for now. So for our app.php file then, what do we need to do in here? Well, obviously the first thing we want to do is pull in our auto loader. Now this is within the vendor file and this pulls in all of our dependencies that we might possibly need. So this is the auto load file just here. So we can require this in. Again, that will just allow us to use slim, use all of our other dependencies. So we can just pull this in like this. So it's vendor autoload.php. And while we're here, why don't we just start sessions? Because we're going to need to do them a bit later or use sessions at least a bit later on. Okay, so before we go any further, we need to talk about the uh, PHP DI package we installed. Now, usually when you pull up a slim application or you uh, create a slim application, you do things like that's you know how they specify on the documentation but in our case what we actually want to do is create inside of here an app.php file which will load everything in as per php di so we're going to do this if you don't understand it immediately don't worry we're going to take a look at how we actually set everything up properly later in terms of uh, dependency injection when we start to add things and of course this will slowly start to make sense so inside of app, the folder, let's just go and create a new file. And this is just going to be called app.php. So this is our base app file. So this has a namespace for me then of cart. And then we have a class here called app. And this extends the dependency injection package bridge. So again, don't worry too much if this doesn't make sense. We're going to go ahead and use di container builder we'll see what that does in a minute and we'll also go and use di bridge slim app and we're going to use that as di bridge and that is just here so the reason that we're pulling these in is because we have a namespace here so inside of here then we have a uh, container that we can configure this will allow us to use all of slim's functionality Plus, it will also allow us to bind other things to our container that we can use later on. So let's create a configure container method. And let's just change this. 
and into this we accept a container builder and we'll just call this builder now all we're going to do here is we're going to turn error uh, handling on within slim there's a good chance that while we're developing this we're going to see an error and we want to make sure that we see a full stack trace of all of them errors so we just say builder add definition and then inside of here we just say settings display error details and we set this to true so before we do anything else and we need to do something else down here in just a moment we're going to go over to our app.php file remember this is where we bootstrap everything up and here we're going to say app equals new app so up here what we want to do is use cart app that's the file that we've just been working on and now technically what we have is a booted up application ready to go in fact what we do need to do is over in our index file so just here we need to say app run so that's all we're going to be doing inside of index.php so we can close that off for now so now that we've done this let's just head over to our browser just give that a refresh and we have a little bit of an error so that's fine we can go and just fix this up so let's go over to our app.php file and it looks like I've spelt this wrong. So let's say add definition. And I don't think I have, oh, it's add definitions rather than add definition because what we're doing is we're passing an array here. So um, at the moment, we now get a 404. Now don't worry about that. If you are following along, that's absolutely fine. It's just because we don't have a root set up to handle this, or at least we don't have a controller set up to handle this. Now, as part of this actual video, we're gonna be creating a home controller just so we can see that this is working. And of course, what we do is we'll also render a view. So we know that we have our view set up uh, as well as everything else. So now what we need to do is let's just close these off. We need to focus on our container file. Now our container file within uh, our app directory will literally just be anywhere we want to bind anything to the container. So let's just create this now. So container.php and we will start to add things into here that we're going to need. Now this will eventually contain everything like our basket, our validation, our product order, customer address, anything that we need to actually bind to our container. But for now, this is pretty straightforward. All we want to do is return an array and inside of here, we want to set router, and this is going to be our slim router, to get slim router class. That will just allow us to uh, use our router as we need. So that's pretty straightforward. And I guess what we can now do is just focus on our views. So we're using Twig. We're using that Twig package we pulled in. Now, the reason that we're doing this and adding them, it to the container is so we can actually inject it into our uh, into our methods within our controllers so let's do this and again if it still doesn't make too much sense we'll see how this works when we get around to creating our home controller so twig class all this will do is if up here we say use slim views twig this will uh, basically just pull back the full namespace for this and then we want to go and create a closure here now inside of here, we'll have container interface and we'll just call that C. So that's our current container. And up here, we just need to pull this in. So what we do is we pull this in from interrupt, container, and then container interface. So within here, all we want to do is just basically boot up Twig so we can start to render views. So you might have seen this if you've worked with slim before we just say new twig so here we say new twig and of course what that is is this just here and into here we pass where we want to load our views from so we haven't created this directory yet but what we can do is define this out and then create the directory so here we're going to say go back a directory into a folder called resources and then into a folder called views and what we can actually do is for development we can turn our cache off so that's just an option that we can pass through the next thing we want to do is add our Twig extensions. Now, our Twig extensions are responsible for things like within our views, if we want to create a link to a particular page, we can use our router within there to build up a path, uh, or we can use any of the other helpers that are available. So we just say Twig add extension, and then in here we say new Twig extension, and this will need to be pulled in at the top. So we need to just do this, so use slim views 
twig extension. So that's now in there and we can use that. And into this will require two arguments. And this is our current router and our, and our current URI. So to do this, we just use C. This is the current container just up here. And we just say get router and that's it. And then down here, we want the current request URI. So we say C get request and then we use the method called get URI. So that is it. And then finally, all we want to do is return twig like that. So now we have twig attached to our container, similar to if you've worked with Slim3 before, you'll know that you can just use a, a get container and then grab that out. But here we're using dependency injection. So now I think as long as everything is working, we're at the point where we can start to create our first route and create our home controller. So under app, I'm going to create a new file called roots, and this will just be responsible for listing all of the roots of our application. There aren't too many. So inside of here, then, how do we start working with controllers? Well, what we need to do is, first of all, in app, just create a directory that will store all of our controllers. And obviously, to keep things nice and simple, we can go and create a home controller in here. So let's do this now. Let's create a new file and we will call this home controller.php. So the goal here then is to create a controller, create an index method, and then uh, render this when we land on the home page. Simple as that. So the namespace for this will be cart controllers, because what we've done, if you're not sure about PSR4 auto loading, we've created it inside of app, which is technically cart and then controllers. And then we have a class here just called home controller. So now we can create a index method like so. And what we can also do is now say, well, in fact, let's just die here and say index. And let's hook this up to our roots just to see if everything works. So here we just say app get forward slash. Then we give the name of the controller and we can do this within an array. So we can say cart controllers home controller and then as the second part of this array we can say index that's the actual method and then we can set a name on this so we can refer back to it later if we wanted to redirect back to the home page for example so obviously the roots isn't going to work because we're not including it anywhere we're not actually requiring it anywhere so we can do this within our bootstrap file so let's go over to our bootstrap app file and down here let's require this in so we're going to say require dir and then in here, we're obviously going to go back a directory. We're going to go into app and we're going to include roots.php. So that's pretty much it. Let's just head over here and you can now see, sure enough, we actually have our index being, or at least the text killing the page there. Now, that's not what we want. We actually want to be able to use Twig to render out a view. So how do we do this? Well, I guess what we can actually do is start by creating our resources folder. Remember when we added this to our container just over here, we said that our views are going to live in a folder called resources and views. So outside of our uh, app directory, we're going to create a resources folder. And then inside of here, we're going to create not a new file, we're going to create a new folder called views. So I guess what we can do is create a home view. And this is pretty straightforward. We just create a new file in here and we will call this home and we're going to give this a twig extension. So let's just say this is the home page. This will actually eventually be the product index page. But now what we can do is inside of our home controller, we can actually render this out. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, like I said earlier, we already have dependency injection set up. So we just inject something into our method and then use it. So let's just pull in slim views twig and now we can inject this in. So here we're going to say twig view. What this will do is it will inject this twig instance in that we bound to our container. So remember this just here, it will return twig and then we can go and say return view render we can choose the name of the file in actual first of all what we need to do is pass our response in so this is a little bit more complicated but essentially what we're doing here is we are pulling in request and response but what we're doing is we are type hinting it here as well 
And to pull these in, we're just using PSR HTTP message response interface. And we'll just call that response. And then down here, we're going to have the same thing, but we're going to have server request interface. And we're just going to call this request. Now, all this means is that our response and our request. Now, with request, we usually get things that have maybe been posted uh, through a form and response we use to respond to a particular request. These are just uh, basically contracts for them. And that this is how we can type in and then essentially just inject them in. So for our render method, then we want to pass in our response, then the name of the view home dot twig. So now that we've done that, we've injected everything in and we are returning that render method or the result of the render method, you can see ooh, we have a little error. So we can just check this out. And it looks like we have a problem with our uh, container. So let's just see what's going on here. So we have twig class just here. Ah, of course. So what we haven't done is told uh, PHPDI what we want to use as our container. So essentially all this means is that it basically cannot find twig. It can't inject it in because it can't find it in our container. So over in app, remember when I said earlier that we need to do something down here, I should have remembered. We obviously need to pull in all of them definitions from our container. So this is really straightforward. There's nothing really to this. It's just exactly what we've already done. So we just say builder add definitions. And then all we do is into here, we pass in this container that we've created. So in here, it's just container.php, simple as that. So now we see another error, but we can sort this out in a minute, but at least we've fixed this up. So we have called undefined uh, function get. The reason for this is that over in our container here, what we're doing is we're using the get function here, but we haven't imported this uh, from the uh, PHP DI package. So it's really, really straightforward. All we do down here is we say use function DI get, and that is it. So now we can refresh and there we go. So beautiful. It took a little bit of work, but we now have uh, dependency injection set up. We have our container created. We have views being rendered out and uh, we're well on the way to just cracking on and getting all this done. So we pretty much now have our application structure set up. I know it was a little bit of work, but now we're in the position where we can actually really start to uh, be quite powerful with the uh, way we use Slim. And uh, it also means that into the future, everything is a lot easier. So now that we've done this, we're going to look at our database setup later. But next, we're going to go ahead and take a look at setting up our Braintree Sandbox account, just so we're ready to accept payments. Let's go over and check that out next. So thanks so much to Braintree Payments for supporting CoCourse. Mobile app development can be complex, but integrating your payments no longer has to be. With Braintree, your business can accept nearly any type of payment on any device with one simple integration. Everything from PayPal to Android Pay or whatever comes next. Braintree's simple, flexible SDKs make your job and payments a lot easier. Learn more at braintreepayments.com slash CoCourse.